I was old enough to get into He-Man in 1982, but by the time 85 came around, I was completely head over heels into this line. And the fact that there was a brand new set of villains out made it really feel to me that, wow, this toy line is actually for me. It's something brand new, and I'm going to be the first to own these figures. And that was a big part of my childhood with He-Man. And it's a big reason, I think, even today, the Horde remain my absolute favorite faction in all of Masters of the Universe. They were amazing figures. They had a lot of tooling, a lot of features. In fact, they all had very unique features. And a big part of that is because this was the middle of the line and Mattel was making, you know, shekels hand over fist because the line was out selling Barbie and Hot Wheels. And that's when you get a lot of tooling when you have your most success. And one of the figures in the introduction of the Horde that was really different and definitely had a lot of tooling was Modulock. I guess you could even call him the original Builder figure, even though you got all the pieces all together. But, you know, I'm sure there's been construction figures before, and there's been construction figures since. But Modulock is really special. He was bigger than the other Masters of the Universe figures. He even came with an instruction book on how to use him. I mean, that was intense, right? Only your video games came with instruction booklets. And he came in a closed box, which was also really unique, since most action figures, including most Motu figures, were all sold on blister cards so you could see and get the price value for what you were purchasing. But Modulock, I understand why a closed box, because he really is a construction toy. Similar to other action figures, quote-unquote, sold in the action figure aisle and closed boxes successfully, are almost always things that you construct and build. Closed boxes just communicate this, so it makes sense he was in a closed box. Now, getting rid of classics was something people waited a long time for, and I hope Emiliano doesn't mind that I'm using his art because it's really awesome. This was his concept fan art he put up, but a lot of people were really imagining how we were going to be able to get Modulock into the line, knowing how much tooling he had. And there were a few different sort of, I guess, versions of him, you could say. In the original mini-comic, he was much more of a little impy character that could reconstruct itself, and even on the back of his package, the little impy versions were played up as, you know, being battle-ready. But I think most people tend to remember Modulock and play with him in what I would consider his standard form. Maybe I'm wrong, but this was how I tended to play with him, and I think if I recall, most of my friends, but who knows, you know, maybe people built their own Modulock and fell in love with that. I always thought this was the canon version, I guess. So for classics, we definitely wanted to do everything we could to make this figure as good as people remembered. And putting it in a closed box was actually part of that. It was done both for cost-saving reasons, but also as a direct homage. Closed boxes are a lot cheaper, by the way. And once you open that closed box, you could slide out the beautiful blister tray that displayed every piece, every weapon accessory, every connector, foot, head. You got it. It was a really cool way, and they were all tied down with little plastic duets so it didn't cause any marks. Now, we even recreated the original artwork from the back of the package showing the different modular combinations and used that on the front. But this was brand new artwork commissioned by the Motu Classics team. We rarely had money to do this, but really wanted to when it came to modular. Now, obviously, everyone has their own wacky creations, and you know some of them make more sense than others, but as a toy, that was part of the beauty of him. Granted, there might be one or two combinations that might go a little bit too far. But, hey, the pieces that he came with let you imagine whatever you wanted him to look like. And, well, we also wanted to take advantage of Motu Classics and its already existing structure to swap heads, swap parts, swap armor. So we made sure that all of the joints were backwards compatible. So if you wanted to put Modulock in, say, a Horde Trooper disguise or you just wanted to add different heads to your already creative Modulock monster-trocities. Monster-trocities? I don't even think that's a word. Let's copyright that one. Someone get on that. So the backwards compatibility, once again, was something I was really proud of because we baked that in from day one, hoping there'd be long-term payoffs like this. I should note, and this kind of goes back to that image a few slides ago for an inappropriate version of Modulock, uh, when he got revealed at San Diego Comic-Con, in my haste making the slides, I made a typo, and let's just say the L in Modulock there was accidentally replaced by a C, and I definitely got heckled on the stage. It happened. 
All right, moving forward, a lot of people also asked, well, okay, you're giving us this version of Modulock, but what about the one from Filmation? We'd love that too. And while you could make kind of a version of this with, with the, uh, the parts, to really get the paint job with the purple in the middle of the torso as part of the armor and the black on the upper legs, well, it was going to require an original figure, but that was always part of the plan. I'm not sure people realize that the whole, what became Club Grayskull, the animation version, that was planned years in advance, and it was all done as a way to get these other versions out, and to get the main characters out there again, because secondary characters don't sell as well. Majulak obviously sells really well, though, because he shows up quite a lot, and while many companies have made him in different forms, while we never quite got to the green-legged version that was released with Top Toys, I think that we did an awesome job, and you couldn't complete a Maju Lock discussion without a quick touch on his robotic counterpart, which, uh, well, was also released in the vintage line. Multibot is his name. He was created by Maju Lock. Maju Lock is Gavin Newcroft, I believe. I'd have to go read the bio again, but he actually had a, a thorough bio in the 87 style guide, and he created Multibot to be a robotic version of himself, as well as to create additional parts that he could then replace his parts with and combine flesh with robotics. So, of course, it was natural that the compatibility of the two would create a third ultimate character, which showed up in the continuity, called Mega Beast, on one of the cross-sell posters. And whether or not this inspired kids, or they figured it out on their own, that you could create a giant insectoid robot monster monstrosity. See, I used the word again. Copyright that. Well, we wanted to also pay homage to the Mega Beast and deliberately put him into the Motu Classics mini comics, as well as giving a breakdown of which parts you would need. Axel and I talked about this for a while, and in order to get him to look the best, it did require two multibots and one modulock. So sorry you couldn't just build it from one of each, but we wanted to really make sure he looked cool, and we figure anyone who's building this probably already has a lot of spare parts because they already have a Modulock and a Multibot, so now maybe this is, you know, an additional purchase to make Mega Beast. I don't know. Everyone plays the way they want, but it is crazy, and you can create him based on the original cross-sell poster and then as replicated in the mini-comic. All right, so that does definitely, you know, bring our horde together, and while there are some characters that never had figures in the vintage line, it was great that Classics filled that gap, but getting those core Horde members, and Modulock was one of them as one of the original releases, it was really important. And I think the customization of Modulock as his play feature, and being able to replicate that perfectly in Classics, he took a lot of tooling. I don't think he shares one part with anyone else, nor did anyone ever use his parts again. And that made him difficult to produce. But he was someone that was on the list for a long time, and once we had a slot that had the available tooling, and we had to spread those out to like one or two a year, well, we gave all the tooling to Modulock, and a few years later, to Multibot, because once we did it, we knew we were going to have to do it again. And whether you're creating Mega Beast or just your own amazing creation, Mega Beast, Multibot, Modulock, they're a cool combination of figures, and I'm so glad we got to them in Classics, because... The chance of getting something like this again, I don't know, it's tough. And he never appeared in the 2000X series, so it left a lot of fans saying, hey, wait a minute, we saw every other Horde member except Modulock. Why didn't he show up in the cartoon or one of the stactions? So Classics became a solution to that, and he's still on my shelf. I keep him right by my desk because he was one of my favorite figures as a kid, and I feel like the Horseman knocked this out of the park, and the Mattel engineers just really drove it home and made it so compatible with other figures and, I guess, with itself.